Welcome to Controlled Pairs Gaming. I am Controlled Pairs and I play the most immersive PC games in the world. <laughs> Chapter 2 for Postscriptum has been out for less than 24 hours and I stopped playing it about 10 minutes ago. I wanted to record this right away so my fresh thoughts as authentic and as real as possible were communicated to you guys as fast as possible. I played for a couple of hours. I got to play both on Stan and Dinat, which are the two new maps that released. Remember, Chapter 2 is based in the 1940 battle for France in which Germany invaded France. And if you want to know more about the historical setting of Chapter 2, you can watch the video on screen, which goes into detail on all of that. This video is specific to my initial reactions of Chapter 2. I played both maps. First, I played on Stan as... Uh, a rifleman and a sapper with the new French faction and then I played on Dinat where I played uh, on the German team as a radio operator and which actually comes with a brand new light machine gun and then I played as a light mortarman and finally uh, as the role became available I played as the team commander. Here's my first impressions of chapter 2 and that is Periscope Games freaking nailed it. It's amazing. Not trying to overhype it, not trying to exaggerate or use hyperbole. It has exceeded all of my expectations. To be completely frank with you guys, when I learned that Chapter 2 was going to be taking place in France for the Battle of France in 1940, I was underwhelmed. It's not a very sexy location, you know, it's not the easy button which would have been, uh, you know, Normandy or the Pacific Theater, the Eastern Front, because those things have been done over and over again by most other World War II franchises, and we all love those locations, and Postscriptum would have done awesome to go to those places, and I'm sure they would have done a great job. So when I heard France 1940, I was a little underwhelmed. I thought about it, and I, I figured the asymmetry of an early war French team facing a early war German team would be kind of interesting. Uh, but I was still hesitant. So I went in with subdued expectations. And all that said, it was absolutely a hundred times better than I could have possibly imagined. Here's why. Postscriptum's always been a good game. And Chapter 2 kind of maintains all of those things that we know and love about Postscriptum. That's the immersion. That is the sound design. That is the communication between teammates, the gunplay, the realism, that gritty combat that we all know and love about Postscriptum and that we have through all of the bloody 7th and Chapter 1. But it improves in the most critical areas that it absolutely needed it. And that is specifically map design, graphics, textures, and specifically I was blown away at the quality of the design of the urban areas. Not only did they look amazing, but they felt lived in and they were designed for purpose, making for dynamic and exciting close range gunfights. Yes, you heard it. Now the interiors of these rooms in chapter two, Plongeon, both Stan and Dinant, and I'm sure in the third map, which hasn't been announced yet, they're all furnished, they're all lived in, the buildings look different from room to room, there's battle damage, they're super dynamic, super interesting, super complex environments, uh, and they're incredibly immersive. And, and over and over again, the comments on my videos and what I see on the forums and Reddit is folks talking about how the empty cookie cutter rooms that we see from building to building in chapter one was quite honestly a reason that people weren't buying the game, which I always figured to be a bit exaggerated and a bit excessive. However. That problem is now remedied. And in addition to those incredibly gorgeous urban areas, they've done an amazing job with the vegetation and with the forests and with the terrain design of everything outside of those urban areas. So even if you're not fighting in a city center, when you're just moving through the hills or through the forest, the vegetation is incredibly lush. You know, it, it looks authentic. You get some freaking lens flare now as you kind of traverse your head left and right and there's sun in the area. And there's micro terrain. So frequently in tactical shooters, a lot of times you'll end up with these giant open fields that are just generally flat and it turns into a pixel sniping and clicking contest where he who has the best resolution or the biggest monitor is able to fire most effectively. Plongeon has done an amazing job of adding that little micro terrain and that really properly placed vegetation. So there's always something that you can kind of tuck yourself up into, uh, maneuver around and use to your advantage. It makes for a really eerie, really dynamic, really kind of spooky, um, creepy, 
an exciting way to fight uh, in that vegetation. When I played on Stan, it was the first time I played. That was when I was um, the uh, on the French team. It was a twilight map layer, so it was kind of dark. And you know, because of that the video that I captured was a little bit harder to see, but it made for a really dark, eerie, and, and kind of freaking scary uh, initial impression. Because I spawned in and we were moving through this really thick forest, and I was kind of just trying to pick out German players that were defending at different spots in this forest. So my teammates and I would kind of creep forward and then pause and then look around and I'd see like a helmet or something or catch a muzzle flash and I'd manage to tag a guy. And then we'd keep moving forward and we'd take a burst of machine gun fire and have to stop. And so it was like kind of really this stop and go really authentic kind of forest fight. After we took the first objective, we had to work our way up this big hill. And it was imposing, like it, it was it was a piece of key terrain, uh, probably a 40 degree slope, really significant, maybe, you know, 70 meter elevation change. Um, and fighting up that hill was, um, it was intense. It was really intense. It was really immersive and it felt like my teammates and I had to coordinate and overcome just this incredible obstacle, but it was cinematic and it was exciting. And by the time we got to the top and we cleared out the bunkers, um, it was incredibly satisfying. After we cleared out that the hill and we took the little bunker complex that was on top of the hill, the next objective was in this village. And frankly, that was my favorite part of Stan was when we got to the village itself and we got to see some of that footage, some of those locations that were initially highlighted in the cin cinematic trailer that Periscope Games released, um, you know, a little bit over a month ago. And seeing that firsthand and, and realizing that those scenes that were recorded in uh, the Denant map layer, that was all real. Like when I first watched the cinematic trailer, I was like, yeah, I got it. Like, that's pretty. You guys scripted an awesome video, whatever. Um, I, I thought that it was like in engine footage. I didn't realize that that map that you're seeing in that cinematic trailer is the map that you fight in. So all those battle damage buildings, all of the furnished rooms, all of the debris piled up, all of the multi-level structures on either side of that long uh, road that makes for a long high-speed avenue of approach, those are all actually in the map and it makes for like an incredibly challenging stalingrad esh um, just uh, uh, urban environment and that was a lot of fun. Afterwards I jumped over to Denant and Denant was breathtaking. That giant citadel stands out as the centerpiece of a lush and dynamic environment. That citadel, because it's way up there on the high ground, is a perfect spot for snipers, for machine guns, and for mortarmen. They become lethal when they own that high ground. The city below is really well developed, and when you're up in the high ground with the draw distance way out there and your graphics cranked up, you get some beautiful lens flare, amazing lighting, and you can see forever. I find myself, as I was creeping through those lush vegetation environments, stopping and listening for the enemy. I was carefully peeking around corners whenever I was in the low ground down in the city. And I was climbing over chairs and looking through holes in the wall, trying to get the perfect shot as I kind of just creep my way in a very Escape from Tarkov-esque sort of movement through that urban environment. The map design is simply superb. And I haven't even got to the subterranean portions of the Denant layer yet. Guys, as I speak right now, there are just shy of 3,000 people playing Postscriptum concurrently. The game is on sale as we speak, and it's currently open for a free weekend. I've been preaching about this game for almost a year now, and with every single update, it gets better. I can say with absolute candor that this update Chapter 2, Plongeon, is the most impressed I have been with this game and with Periscope up to date, like bar none. You can tell that Chapter 2 was designed with the Unreal Engine 4.21 update in mind, and the developers have absolutely pushed the limits of the engine and are doing everything they can. Now that they had all the gameplay and everything already ironed out and good to go, they are now building the structure around that gameplay that supports an amazing experience. And it's only going to get better from here. With that said, I hope that you'll join our community. I hope you'll buy this game. I hope to see you on the battlefield. And if you do choose to join our community and join the crew, I hope you'll consider joining our Discord server so you can play in my squad sometime. Until next time, this is Controlled Pairs, signing off.